Welcome to Movie Recaps. Today we dive into the 2020 drama movie The Banker. The movie is based on true story of a young man named Bernard who had a big dream to become the first African-American banker in the United States and fulfill his American dream. The movie starts in Texas 1939 a place where black men faced rampant discrimination, with a young black shoe shining boy named Bernard. Bernard chose to put his shoe shining store in front of the bank such that he can get access to rich white businessmen. Bernard's plan was to hear the business ideas and deals that white businessmen were discussing as he cleans their shoes. Bernard writes down every business idea he heard from them in his notebook as soon as they go in order to collect all the financial knowledge necessary. His only burning dream was to become a prominent banker. Bernard is chased by the policeman, reaching home his father tells him that his dream was not practical in a place like Texas where blacks face severe discrimination. Bernard remains confident and determined looking into his father's eye directly. After 15 years a grown-up Bernard movies to Los Angeles with his family to chase his dream. Bernard starts his life in a simple home owned by his relative. Bernard promises his wife Eunice that they will make it soon and get a better house. The following morning Bernard movies around the city looking for houses for sale. Bernard finds out that the black people were congested and surprisingly the white people had a lot of empty houses in their communities. As a real estate expert he sees a great business opportunity because black people had rental demands but there were no house for them. He movies around with his wife in a white neighborhood and they find a dilapidated house in poor condition but the location of the house was near the black communities. Bernard then goes to the owner of the house and begs him to sell it to him since he had rented only half of the house. He promises to give him $30,000 cash and more $5,000 after renting out the remaining rooms. The owner refuses, the following day Bernard goes to the bank to meet the bank manager but the secretary refuses to take him to the manager. He waits outside the bank for the manager to come out and gets a chance to talk to him. He approaches the manager as soon as he gets out begs for the loan and he explains to him that it would benefit one of his big VIP customers. Annoyingly the manager rejects his loan proposal. At home he gets a call from the house owner asking him whether he used his name in order to secure a loan from the bank. Bernard apologizes to him, surprisingly the owner is motivated by his determination and organize a loan for him from the bank. The scene then changes to an old white lady coming back home from shopping, seeing a black man at the door. She asks him what are you doing here, the black man responds that he's renovating the house. The old lady tells him that works like him should be so careful. Bernard replies don't worry this is now my building and I will take good care of it. The white lady then calls the police, Bernard pulls out the real estate owner's certificate and shows the police. After verification of the certificate the police leaves in disappointment. The very night Bernard returns to the building, the old lady tells him to leave immediately because no house renovations at night. Bernard responded to her I'm not a renovation work, this time I'm the owner of the building. The old gets annoyed and in the morning she moves out because she didn't want to share same space with the black people. Immediately Bernard rents out the building to a black tenant. In short time th the building gets occupied and Bernard pays back the remaining amount to the former white owner. The former white owner then agrees to start a business partnership with Bernard, the partnership goes well as planned which made them make a lot of money. Shortly after Bernard buys a residential house for his family. The former white owner dies in sleep and the company is taken by his wife who discriminated against the black people. She offers to buy Bernard's shares at small price or else she sue him and he goes with nothing. Bernard decides to go to court but finds it hard to find someone to prove his partnership with the old late white owner. He remembers the bank manager not knowing that the manager had already connived with the widow. Disappointed Bernard stands confused in the bank seeing the black community discrimination around. A big plan comes up in Bernard's mind, the building had four banks inside but all of them discriminated the blacks. Standing in bank Bernard gets a broad idea of buying the entire building and fight black discrimination. Bernard goes to another black real estate dealer in Los Angeles named Joe, he explains to him the entire business plan. Joe finds it impossible because the price of the land of the bank building was too high and no black people had ever bought land in downtown of LA. Bernard convinces him that if they buy the bank it will be possible to follow real estate trend deals and also easy to secure loans from these banks. 
Joe is surprised by the ideal plan and accepts to be part of it. Joe tell Bernard that they can't deal with white men directly because of their color. Bernard tell him about his white helper Matt they start training Matt high class etiquette and golf game, real estate figures and mathematical calculations. After some time MAT perfects in the all training and masters golf. As a promising entrepreneur Matt gets a meeting with the owner of the bank building. The fast meeting goes well and Matt is given offer to buy the bank building. Matt is anxious of the next last negotiations, Bernard teaches him all the real estate mathematics. Fast he counts all the lights on the building and all the vacant space in order to get the estimate of the building total value. He makes Matt to memorize the building operation costs and annual revenue. Matt then meets the building owner and beats him with building operation figures he gets surprised and calls him a super genius. Finally they manage to get the building with price tag of $2.4 million at just $1.56 million. Bernard gets access to all banks managers as they planned. With prior knowledge and easy access to bank loans, Bernard real estate business booms rapidly. They help many black people to move and rent in white neighborhood. Later in 1963 Bernard goes back to Texas to visit his father Britain. His father gets shocked with Bernard's success. The following morning Bernard movies around his childhood town with his son. They talk a young boy shining shoes in the same place Bernard used to when he was young. That moment Bernard gets the idea to help the black people in his childhood hometown of Texas by building for them better housing. Bernard goes to Joe and convinces him to buy the mainland bank in Texas. Joe tells him that the racism in Texas was at its climax. But Bernard manages to convince him and he accepts the plan. They use Matt again to be the main negotiator because he was white. Matt meets with the bank owner Robert Florence Sr. and his son who had a lot of suspensions. Finally Robert sells them the bank. Bernard starts helping the black communities by approving their loans. Secretly Robert Florence Jr. starts investigating all the loans that the mainland bank approved. He trails Matt and finds him in a secret meeting with Joe and Bernard. He questions them about the particular loans that they do approve and tells them about the legal letter from the U.S. Treasury Department. Robert tells them that the U.S. Treasury Department was to audit the bank in one month period. Matt comes up with a plan to buy another bank to transfer all the questioned loan to that bank. The idea comes in to buy the bank of Marlon and more, Bernard raises the problem of overseeing the new bank operations. Matt asked to be allowed to manage the operations of the new bank. Bernard not convinced with Matt's suggestion but finally agrees with condition of close watch by his wife Eunice. Matt starts the operations of the Marlon and more bank and signs up all loans with help of the lawyer. After some time Matt is informed by Robert Jr. that the white customers wanted to withdraw all their money from mainland bank. Investigation of Federation Auditor begins, Bernard disgusting himself as a cleaner at the bank to help Matt. The Federal Auditor finds a lot of mistakes in the bank files. Bernard questions Matt how those loans got approved. Finally they found out that Robert Florence Jr. had a hand in it. Not willing to lose his bank Matt made a terrible move without the knowledge of others. Next Joe and Bernard go to the bank and question Matt about the untold accounted loans. Federation Bank Auditors gets in the bank and revokes its operational license. Then on way out FBI arrests Joe and Bernard. Later they discuss the case with their lawyer. The scene then changes to Matt meeting country Senator McClellan and accepts to testify against his friends. In exchange for his freedom Matt testifies in court against his friends. Senator meets Bernard and gives him a deal if he accepts Matt's testimony he goes to jail. Finally in the closing scene Bernard decides to follow his heart, he talks about black segregation in the country. Bernard and Joe sentenced to federal prison, Robert Florence Jr. regains the bank at small price, Matt walks away free with no charges. Thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share.